tonight we're looking at a TC likely to form in the East Pacific and we're watching the Caribbean Sea for potential development in the Atlantic. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropic Weather Bulletin for June the 14th. Well, this evening across the wide world of tropics, we have one system parked on this map, and that is Alex. Yep, Alex is still alive. Soon, though, it will be gone for at least the next six years. Otherwise, uh, across the world, we look fairly quiet on this map, but it is deceiving. Let's jump right into the basis so we can get a closer look. On day 14 of Atlantic hurricane season, we are watching the Southern Caribbean, as mentioned in the headlines, a 40%. A uh, chance has been given by the National Hurricane Center uh, with an area of disturbed thunderstorms in the Southern Caribbean as it generally tracks northwestward. It's not the most likely uh, chance to become a tropical cyclone, but regardless of development here, we could be seeing some heavy rain over Central America and Mexico. And on, on day 31 of Pacific hurricane season, we're watching Invest 92E there off the coast of Mexico. That is likely to form 90% in the next five days and two days, actually. And east of there, we have an area of interest there, 30% chance that moves west. In the western Pacific, we are very quiet here. I can't remember the last time we actually had a... I, I, I'm trying to think. I don't think we have had a tropical weather bulletin with a system in the western Pacific that has had a decent chance of forming. wonder if that will change in the next week or two. I'll have to see exactly how the environmental conditions play out there. And the North Indian Ocean same case as the western pacific we are very quiet here and i don't expect to see much of anything in north indian ocean for a long long time getting to the satellite imagery tonight here's the atlantic basin you can see that area of disturbed thunderstorms there in the southern caribbean nothing too organized right now i know a lot of people have been posting online of the gfs forming a hurricane out of that just uh don't take that as with uh you know as much confidence as you would normally as well the GFS may be overdoing it a bit, and by, from run to run, it does vary greatly in strength. But as of right now, alongside east of 92E, we're certainly looking at a good possibility that we could be looking at some tropical cyclone formation, and as such, those in land areas near those should be monitoring those areas and stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information on those. In the West Pacific, we are very quiet here. Uh, I don't really need to say much on this map. We don't really have any thunderstorm activity out there in the open west Pacific. We just have some in the Philippines and further west on your screen. But otherwise, generally quiet. Same case in the North Indian Ocean. We just have some general monsoonal thunderstorms active. And something I noticed just looking at this is the easterly flow that you can see uh, those uh, upper level clouds streaming towards the west on the screen. That is one of the features keeping any tropical cyclone formation at bay. That's just wind shear. Uh, it looks very strong on that imagery as well. Here's a floater on Invest 92E, and the thunderstorm activity over the system has not really been deep at all over the past day, but we are seeing a new blow up of convection on the northern side. Whether or not that puts it to tropical storm status, we'll have to see how that plays out. We have a lot of deep convection though over the United States. This is our last floater for tonight. Looks like a very significant severe weather event taking shape across the U.S. And I hope those in the path of it are well prepared and stay safe ahead of those storms. And we're going to go through a lot of sea surface temperature maps now. The first one is a bit new. This is a sea surface temperature change map over the past week across the world. And you can see in the Atlantic we have seen a lot of warming. Uh, not too much in the East Pacific, in the West Pacific, not too much. We've seen some in the South China Sea, that's about it. But you notice on that La Nina area, we haven't really seen much of a change in, in the negative direction or the positive direction. It's kind of just been staying the same. And looking at the actual sea surface temperatures, the East Pacific for 92E and that other area of interest, pretty warm. 92E doesn't have too much longer before it starts being pushed towards cooler sea surface temperatures, though. And where our area of interest is in the Southern Caribbean, it is generally warm 28 to 29 degrees Celsius uh, in that region, and it looks like environmental conditions might be uh, at least con uh, conducive for some development to take place there, hence why the National Hurricane Center has a 40% chance on that. In the Indian Ocean, we are 
generally warm as we have been for a while. Same case in the West Pacific, that 30 degree isotherm continues to expand in the West Pacific. I do fear for whenever we do actually get a good environmental condition set up in the West Pacific and we get a storm taking advantage of those waters, let's hope that if that, or when that scenario does take place, let's hope that that system stays out to sea. The last thing we want is a strong system hitting land. Here's the Associated temperature anomalies. You can see the Atlantic. We are generally above average. East Pacific is continuing to go below average, especially around where that second AOI is. That La Nina is still very prominent in the uh, Pacific region. West Pacific is very much above average. And the North Indian Ocean, we are seeing a lot of below to near average areas show up there. And the Oceanic Key content in the Caribbean Sea, we are really seeing these values start to tick up. Oh, I guess tick down because there's are, of course, valleys uh, estimating how deep these waters go. So I suppose in that sense, it would be going down in a way. In the East Pacific, it is still generally decreasing, but that oceanic heat content certainly could support a hurricane. Don't let that uh, blue color deceive you. And the Western Pacific, there's one of my fears as well. The oceanic heat content is... Uh, extreme in some cases in the West Pacific game. Let's just hope that when a storm does take advantage of that, it stays out to sea. On this day in 1983, we're going back to Hurricane Barbara in the East Pacific. By Force 13 analysis, this peaked as a Category 5 hurricane with winds of about 160 miles per hour. Very impressive view on satellite. Uh, I looked at infrared as well, and that eye was just so clear on infrared exactly what you expect to see in a high-end Cat 4 or a Category 5 hurricane, but definitely a amazing storm and certainly a difference to what we have today. Getting back to 2022, the next name on the list in the Atlantic may be a bit closer than I originally thought. Next name there is Bonnie. In the East Pacific, the next two names are Blast and Celia. We could be getting both fairly soon. In the Central Pacific, I'm sorry, we have no hope for Hone anytime soon, despite the activity. In the West Pacific, on list 4, the next name here is Shaba. In the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Citrang. And I know, I believe in the Southwest Indian Ocean at least, we're getting close to the window closing for any storms to grab the next name in there. That name is Let Lama. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Darien. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Hale. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and as, as always, we'll have another one tomorrow night.